Um, but without further ado, it's a great pleasure to introduce Thomas Schoen from Poznan, who's going to be talking about improved bounds in Roth's theorem. Thank you. So thank you for your invitation. Uh, so I would like to uh, sketch uh, the proof of a in slightly improved bound in Roth's theorem. Uh, so first let me give brief history of a problem. If we define by R of n the maximal size of a subset of first n positive integers that avoids free term arithmetic progressions, then the well-known conjecture of Erdős and Turan states that R of n is a little of n. So the conjecture was confirmed by Klaus Roth, who introduced very important method, uh, dense increment method. And then there's a sequence of refinements, Hugh Brown and Sam already. Uh, you, they used uh, for, uh, for the first time uh, L2 density increment method to prove this result. Then two papers of Bourguin, very important. In the first one, he, he used uh, Bohr sets. In the second, uh, he uh, looked at the structure of a spectrum. And then two papers of Tom Sanders. He proves a uh, Bourguin estimate. And uh, uh, Sanders was, was first who reached logarithmic barrier. Uh, Then Bloom improved Sanders' estimate, proving this result. And uh, my estimate is slight improvement of uh, Bloom's inequality. I'm going to sketch you the proof of, of this estimate. Uh, so uh, the, as to the lower bounds, uh, Essentially, still the best known is all this estimate of, of uh, Berendt. Uh, slightly, uh, it was slightly refined by, by Elkin, and by the shape of the function is still the same. So uh, I will give you um, some notation. I, I, I use in the uh, paper. This is very standard notation in additive combinatorics. So convolution. And uh, Fourier transform data spectrum of a characteristic function of a set A additive energy. So if M is equal to two, this is just standard additive energy of a set. Uh, then span of a set X and by dimension of A I mean the minimal size of set A uh, such that A is covered by span of X and uh, uh, what is important uh, here that if A uh, if A is a very structured set then the dimension of A should be much smaller than the size of A. So trivial estimate, low, uh, upper bound for dimension is just the size of A. But if a subset of A is small, so dimension is also small. Uh, Bohr set, so the size of uh, this generating set of gamma is, is called rank of B. And uh, if gamma is highly structured, then this Bohr set contains a Bohr set uh, with uh, a much smaller rank. Okay, so we, we also use um, L2 density increment method uh, introduced by Samaradi and Hugh Brown, uh, which states that if uh, 
L2 norm over of Fourier coefficients of characteristic function of A over some set gamma is large, then we get density increments of a set A on some shift of Bohr set, uh, which has rank dimension of gamma and uh, reasonable radius. So what is important here is that uh, the set gamma, the set gamma should be structured. Yes, because instead of uh, the rank of uh, the spore set is just dimension of gamma, not the size of gamma. Okay, so uh, my proof uh, follows the method uh, of Bateman and Katz. So let me recall that Bateman and Katz broke the logarithmic barrier in the capset problem. So in F, uh, the same problem in, in the finite field F3 to N. Uh, of course, now we know much better bounds uh, after the paper of uh, Krut, Leff and uh, Pach in capset problem, but the method of Bateman and Katz can be used uh, in integer case. So it partially it was done by, by Thomas Bloom. So uh, let us start so, in quite a standard way. So we embed our set A in a, a cyclic group of prime order. That's a dense subset with density delta with no free term arithmetic progressions. So uh, this exponential sum counts arithmetic progressions. So we have only trivial arithmetic progressions. This sum is very small. And after applying triangle inequality and Helder's inequality, we get that L3 norm of Fourier coefficients uh, of a set uh, of the characteristic function of set A is uh, large. And we consider essentially three cases. So the proof is uh, split into three cases. Uh, if uh, uh, the first sum contributes much to the L3 norm. So this case is one I, I, I called uh, middle size Fourier coefficients. So this is summation in this range. The second case, uh, which I called uh, small Fourier coefficients. So if Fourier coefficients, which are around delta, times cardinality of A contributes a lot of, to the L3 norm. And uh, the last case, if one and two uh, do not hold. So mu is a small constant. Mu here is a small constant. Okay, so uh, let us start with the first case, middle size Fourier coefficients. This is uh, relatively, easy to get density increment in this case, we'll apply iteratively uh, lemma of Bloom. Uh, so this is not the simplest version of Bloom's lemma. Uh, the standard version uh, says that in delta theta in the whole spectrum, we can find a, a theta fraction of the spectrum with small dimension. And here we have that for every subset of, of uh, spectrum, this holds. Uh, but uh, Bloom's proof in his paper, a uh, very uh, general statement for uh, function supported on spectrum. And this version can be deduced from you know, this uh, very general statement. Uh, so if, uh, let me recall, uh, now we assume that one holds, so our Fourier coefficients in this sum are considerably bigger than delta times cardinality of A. So we can expect that in such large spectrum, we will find, find more structure. And indeed, this is, this is the case. So uh, just theta is at least, um, delta to one minus mu. And uh, applying iteratively 
uh, Bloom's lemma, we get the following density, first density increment lemma, which says that, uh, that we get density increment, huge density increment by factor delta to minus mu over four on low rank Bohr set. And uh, the proof is pretty simple. We just uh, uh, pick a structural uh, piece in uh, our spectrum, which is which has small dimension, and remove it from spectrum, and and then uh, apply it once again, and so on, uh, because we have to uh, find a structural set with size at least delta to minus two minus some mu uh, and with dimension less than delta to minus one plus mu. And uh, then it's enough to apply L2 density increment method. The next case small Fourier coefficients. And following Bateman and Katz, we, we considered here two subcases, additively smoothing spectrum and additively non-smoothing spectrum. So Schredow's lemma uh, gives estimate for every subset of, uh, if estimate of uh, additive energy for every subset of spectrum. And um, we say that our spectrum is sigma additively smoothing if E8 energy is at least bigger uh, by factor delta to minus sigma than the estimate given by Schredow's lemma. So roughly speaking, the, our spectrum contains more structure than in extremal case. So it should be also easy to, to get density increment. And indeed, this is the case, uh, which uh, I, I'm not going to give details of it because this is really simple. Uh, if uh, in this uh, additively smoothing case, if E8 energy is is slightly bigger than, than in Schredow's lemma, then again, we will find mm, low rank Bohr set such that some shift of our set has a density increment on, on, uh, on B. And again, um, density increment is very huge by factor delta to minus mu. Okay, the harder case is a uh, non-smoothing case. And here we apply a structural result of Bateman and Katz, a very important thing. So roughly it, it says that if our spectrum has energy size of delta to two plus tau and E8 energy is at most sized of delta to four plus three tau. Four plus three tau, this, uh, uh, this is guarantee, but, but Schedow's lemma, but it's non-smoothing case. So it's at most size of delta to four plus three tau plus sigma for some small sigma. Uh, and then there exists alpha and pairs of sets Hi, Xi, such with these sizes, and Hi is highly structured, has small sum set, and <clears throat> our spectrum is covered roughly by, by sum sets of this type. So we have precise description of such spectrum, and of course the hardest case is where when alpha is uh, very small. Because if alpha is large, then our structural set Hi is also large. 
we can get also a lower bound for the for the sets using the last inequality. So roughly the size of HI is delta to um, tau plus alpha plus uh, big OF. And so we ask, we uh, will use uh, this theorem for data equal to delta to one plus mu. Then our spectrum has almost maximal size, yes, possible size. And in this situation, we can apply bateman katz theorem. And uh, we'll use it with tau and mu defined as here. And this is the first subcase is where alpha is, uh, when alpha is uh, large, it's at least 20 times f of mu. And then the first case is again simple. Why? Because if alpha, as I said, if alpha is large, then our structural piece, uh, our structural pieces are quite big. And then again, it's easy to find a large subset in spectrum bigger than delta to minus two minus mu with dimension less than delta to minus one plus mu. And this again leads to density increment of this form. Again, we have very huge density increment on low rank board set. The harder case is when alpha is small. Yes, then huge part of a spectrum is covered by some set x plus h, where x is a uh, size of x is roughly delta to minus two and size of h is delta to minus one. And indeed in, in a such spectrum, we cannot find uh, a structural subset uh, which is bigger than delta to minus uh, two minus mu and which has considerably smaller dimension than delta to minus one. So one, one must use different argument here. And we prove the following lemma. Again, we get a huge density increment. So we assume that we are exactly in this case, this is additively non-smoothing case. Uh, and uh, alpha is uh, small. So our set X uh, has size close to delta theta two to third and uh, size of H is close to size of delta theta to one third. And the sum set shares a lot of points with uh, spectrum. And then we have density increment. Factor delta two minus F. And I will sketch the proof of this lemma. <clears throat> so we define Bohr set generated by uh, this structural piece of spectrum of uh, H. So this set is highly structured. So this Bohr set contains low, uh, low rank Bohr set. So this is it. We can think about it as a low rank Bohr set. So if we define AT to be this in intersection, so, uh, and assume that we have no density increment on Bohr set B. So every size of, F, for every T size of AT is at most delta to one minus F size Bohr set. 
And so the characteristic function of of set A T is just the product of uh, characteristic function of A plus T and uh, B. So the Fourier coefficients uh, are convolution of Fourier coefficients of A and B. If we apply Parseval formula, uh, we obtain the following. Uh, formula and uh, restricting our summation to only to the set H, we get this inequality because for uh, h in uh, the set h, uh, Fourier coefficients of b are very large, right? and uh, we summed up over uh, x from our the second set, set x. Yes, then. Uh, on the right hand side in the, this first inequality we get exactly the structure of our spectrum yes x will be from our set x and h is in h and if uh, x uh, so here we will get uh, our uh, spectrum um, so that means that the Fourier coefficients of a will be roughly delta times the cardinality of A and the Fourier coefficients of B will be uh, roughly the size of B. So this sum must be very huge. Yes, so we, we obtain this uh, inequality and after some averaging arguments uh, and using our assumption that uh, the size of AT is not too large, the, uh, we obtain that for some eta, which is at least uh, square root of delta, roughly, um, eta spectrum of uh, the set AT is large. This is very large spectrum, so delta square root of delta. And this, uh, 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 oh, this is okay. This is spectrum, but but uh, uh, we know that 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 many elements from X, our set X, are in this spectrum. But we know that every subset of spectrum must be structured. So we want to find the structure in set X, but X should be unstructured because otherwise we can easily find uh, easily get density increment. So we apply once again Bloom's lemma and find a structural piece in this subset of spectrum. So there is a set Z of this size with dimension at most eta to minus ma, one log n over cardinality of AT. So, and here we must be slightly careful because uh, this is not uh, here uh, mm, density relative to Bohr set, but this is density of AT in the whole group. And it can be quite, quite small. However, as I said, um, our Bohr set has very low rank. So it must be very large because some set of H is very, very small and this ball set yes and that means that uh, that uh, this quantity uh, is uh, at least delta to my uh, at most delta to minus 3f so we use here the fact that that uh, h is highly structured and we apply this argument again iteratively to find sufficiently large uh, subset of uh, X uh, with a small dimension. And we get in a standard way using L2 density increment uh, mm, method, uh, we get the increment on the Bohr set on a different, not on, on B, on different Bohr set. Okay, so the and this is non-smoothing case. And the last case, if uh, 
the inequality so one and two does not hold but that means that uh, that uh, uh, we have this inequality and that was for me the hardest case because so so uh, typically large Fourier coefficients uh, it, it's uh, easy case it's it's rather easy to to get a density increment however we want to get density increment by factor which is uh, uh, which is not a constant and um, we will use here uh, well-known uh, chunk spectral lemma which uh, estimates the dimension of uh, theta spectrum And the lemma is, is the following. This is the last case, and only in this case we cannot get density increment as large as by factor by delta to minus, say, mu. We have only factor roughly log one over delta. And I sketch you the, the proof of this, of this uh, lemma. So let us define uh, the function that, 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 that counts uh, arithmetic progressions in F, so weighted progressions, and uh, define all set generated by uh, spectrum delta, delta to one tenth, and with some reasonable gamma. gamma. And uh, beta is a uh, probability uniform measure on Bore set. And we will consider the function, uh, which is a convolution of beta and uh, characteristic function of A, and that will be approximate of uh, our set. And if we assume that we have no density increment by factor L, yes, so that means that our function uh, uh, L infinity norm of our function is at most L times delta. However, L1 function is uh, delta. So if we define the set S in this way, then clearly we get the estimate for the size of S with at least N over 2L. So S is very huge set, yes? Recall that L is roughly log one over delta. And the next step, we estimate the number of uh, free terms arithmetic progression in F. So, the first inequality follows from the definition of S. And the second inequality, this is the main result of, uh, of Bloom in Bloom's paper, uh, set with density one over L contains at least E2 minus L log to fourth L N square arithmetic progressions. And this is at least delta to third plus mu over 10 n squared. And the next step, we compare arithmetic progressions in F in, in our set A, which is progression free. And this is, uh, this is uh, standard Fourier analysis. We split the sum in for R in our large spectrum, and for R which are not in our large spectrum, if, if R is in, in large spectrum, then of course beta uh, of R is very close to one. Yes, because the Bohr set was generated by the spectrum. So the first sum is small, and the second sum is small because of our assumption. When the middle size and small Fourier coefficients does not contribute much to, to uh, L3 norm. 
So that means that we have a lot of arithmetic progressions in our set, which is a contradiction, of course. So we must have a density increment by factor roughly log one over delta. And uh, so to finish the proof, so this is classical iterative procedure. Uh, however, in the first step, we will use uh, the following theorem. So summarizing all the, uh, this uh, density increments uh, we obtain, we can formulate the following theorem. In each case, uh, we got density increment at, at least by factor log one over delta over log log to fourth one over delta on a low rank Bohr set, rank at most delta to minus one plus some constant. And we use this theorem in the first step of iterative procedure. Yeah, so in the first step, we we get density, density increment by factor roughly log one over delta. And then with this increased density, we have a set with increased density on, on some low rank ball set, we apply uh, Bloom's uh, iterative lemma. Yes, so roughly if you have two sets, one is in the ball set, the second is in Borset with smaller radius, the same borset. If some technical assumptions are satisfied, then we have either density increment on a borset with uh, this rank, or we have roughly expected number of free term arithmetic progressions. Yes, so Applying this iteratively, we will get the, the required bound. Yes, once again, the first step, we, we apply uh, the theorem I formulated before, and uh, then we get bigger density increment, and then we get density increment by constant factor. And this leads to, to the claim estimate. Thank you. Okay, let's all give Thomas a round of applause. If you unmute your microphone, and give him a clap. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to um, open up uh, this now to some questions. So if you do have a question, either um, unmute your microphone and, and ask away or use the raise hand feature or if you're nervous um, or your microphone's not working, ask the question in the in the chat. So please do fire away. Perhaps while we're waiting and um, while you're formulating questions, I, I can ask one. Um, so Thomas, do you think um, these methods might improve uh, your current record bounds for, for equations in more variables, translation in variant equations in more variables? No, I don't think so. Uh, this is quite different method. So, uh, first of all, uh, to get better bound in, uh, uh, in problem with, with longer equations, you need to, um, to have uh, Density increment on on Borset with much lower rank. This is we we got rank delta to minus one plus something, but uh, one needs uh, I don't know log log one over delta uh, to to some power. Yes, yeah, so it doesn't work for 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 longer equations. Okay, definitely. Okay. So Ben Green has a question, Ben. Uh, yeah, so at some point you fed in Bloom's bound to your argument. What mm -hmm. happens if you feed in your new bound at that point in the argument? Does that lead to any improvement or not? Mm. In which bounds? In, in, uh, you mean in this last one? So if I understood correctly, there was a point where you fed in Bloom's bound and you had an exponent of four. 
Ah, yes, of okay. course. Yes, yes, of course. You get better bounds. So what would it get? Uh, so I can improve uh, just... Uh, I think I, I can remove one log-log term, log-log factor. Ah, you mean, uh, no, I mean, uh, I mean, inside the proof. Yeah, carry on, carry on going through the slides. Yes, yes, yes. I, I think you. Yeah, here, here, right. This okay. four, this four here, isn't that the four in Bloom's? You mean in this estimate? Yes. Yes, isn't that the four from ah, Bloom's paper? Uh, probably yes, but I, I, I didn't check this. But, so but. You, but what, but well, I'm pretty sure that you, you will get f just uh, third power. Right. So if you if you feed in your result here to get a third power there, does it lead to a refinement of your new bound or not? Uh, no, I thought about it, but uh, but uh, but I think you, we will. I don't remember the reason, but but it's not possible to uh, to to apply this iteratively. Okay. Thanks. Um, the reason is that, um, or maybe we will not get this. I don't remember, sorry. But I thought about this also. Great, are there any more questions? Well, if not, um, I think it would be great to thank Thomas again for a, it was a, a great talk on such an exciting topic. So if we give him another round of applause, if you unmute yourself, give him a round of applause. Well, once again, thank you very much for the invitation. Great to have you.